community leader panel. Every year in our August training, um, we try and have this panel because you know we want to, as a, as a team, be taking time to hear your stories, your experiences. Um, so thank you so much. Introduce the panel and team. Yeah. So I would love to have each of you. I don't know everybody yet. Introduce yourselves. <laughs> um, and if you could say a little bit about the work that you're doing and how you came to know Toxics Action Center. Oh, do we do a panel here? Yeah. Oh, you're <laughs> <in the panel. laughs> Congratulations! Yeah, tricked, tricked again. Tricked again. I agreed to let you in my house. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. You can just delegate to Emily if you want. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, no. Dave, do you want to start? You know so much more than I. <laughs> I'm Dave Dion. Uh, I started out on the Brayton Point campaign 16, 17 years ago, mm. and about seven or eight years ago, I met Sylvia and. Pauline and uh, well, I already knew Emma, uh, and uh, I already knew Joe, and uh, we've been working on the uh, little power plant that you guys saw uh, a little while ago. That's now closed. Yay! That's it. Well, so, what do you want to hear? <laughs> oh, you were involved in a couple of other things, I thought. Yeah, as I recall. Sure, lots of stuff, but I don't think it's pertinent. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that gives me 16 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I yeah, relinquished. I was on the radio yeah. for a half hour. Okay. Uh, Joe Corvallo, Fall River, um, still the chairman of the Coalition to Stop the New BFI Dump, uh, still the president of the Coalition for Responsible Siting of LNG Facilities, uh, a board member of South Coast Neighbors United, um, Green Futures Environmental Group, um, for the Land Trust, CSJ, uh, Vietnam Veteran Against the War, <laughs> you name it, I've been involved in it. You know about that guy's tank in Boston? What's that? <laughs> Ho Chi Minh. Yeah. <laughs> Where's your ACO? Here we go. Here we go. So, um, uh, and I guess, the, you know, you, you had mentioned uh, something about a Something you felt good about? That's the next question. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, 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 oh. This is just the introduction. Yes. Yeah, so I have another 14 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, it. How did you, you, you meet Toxic Action Center? Oh. Um, <laughs> this is my time. I, I actually met Toxic Action Center in, must have been 2001, mm -hmm. when uh, Martin, uh, what Matt. was it? Matt. Matt yeah. Martin. Yeah. Matt, Matt Wilson. Matt Wilson. <laughs> yeah. Matt oh, yeah. Wilson was the director, and we were fighting the dump. Yeah. And what happened was, um, we we persuaded the mayor of Fall River to to use the board of health to close the dump, um, and then found out that they weren't really serious about that mm. <laughs> because we were getting free trash pickup and uh, tipping fees and <clears throat> all those other things. So for the the interim time, we sent our uh, our trash got sent to uh, Rochester, Seamass, uh, which burned it, unfortunately. And uh, uh, we had a, a series of six hearings that went from five o'clock in the afternoon till nine o'clock yeah. with the BFI lawyers and the Fall River City lawyers, and uh, I sat through five of those, um, and it was a travesty. It was all about, uh, the city really didn't want the dump to be closed, because they didn't want to have to pay for uh, trash pickup. Uh, but they gave the, the appearance of wanting to close it. Can I interject a little yes. part here, Joe? Go ahead. Maybe stop the flow of, uh, wait a minute, no. Um, they've got, the forum has been through two mayors, yeah. Yeah. and maybe three, yes. I'm not sure, all about the trash fees. They voted yeah. two people out, and the, this latest guy seemed, I know one person in Fall River, my, my electrician is a cop in Fall River, and the, the, th the third guy's in trouble over the trash fees because so they're crazy. so ruined, I guess, from having free trash for like 30 years. Yeah. And of course, they ruin the water at the same time. Sorry, go ahead. So you met Matt Wilson. 
Yes. Right, well, I, I I met him through that. Yeah. And uh, I met Matt around that time. And we had too. John McNabb, who used to work for DPW, and at that time had written the last five-year wow. municipal solid waste plan yeah. for the state. And then when they didn't follow any of his yeah. recommendations, yeah. left and went to work for Clean Water Action. Yeah. So so long story short, <laughs> uh, they ended up. Uh, of course, BFI appealed uh, the decision to close the dump, uh, and we had suggested through John McNabb that the three members of the Board of Health not testify at the appeal hearing, uh, and suggested strongly that we had enough compelling evidence to keep the dump closed. So. Uh, I missed the last meeting because I went to South Africa for a month, and that was the end of apartheid. When I, when I'm I, kidding. When I came back, <laughs> when I came back, uh, they hadn't ruled on the appeal yet, but the judge, in a five-page decision, said that that she sided with BFI and she based it on the testimony of the three jerks from the Board of Health who we said not to testify, and of course they did. So about a, two weeks after, uh, Can you yes, I'm going to get okay. right to the end right now. <laughs> so so two weeks later, Terry Sullivan, who was in charge of water and all that stuff in Fall River, gets on the radio and says that we've been testing the sludge. Anybody still eating? Been testing the sludge, and we found that it's okay to bring to the to the landfill. <laughs> So I got in touch with Matt, and I said, "Can you?" And I knew the guy at the radio station, and I said, "Can you get Matt on the station uh, to talk about sludge?" Hmm. So he said, "Oh yeah, sure." I gave him a whole hour, Whoa. and and Matt just went through the carcinogens and wow. you name it. So wow. they the, the city decided like three days after that to they not bring the sludge to the dump. Wow. I never knew that. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Joe. Pauline and Buddy are next. I'm Pauline Rodriguez. I'm not nearly as good as they are. <laughs> I'm not going to save the world. You already I was have. Very selfish. Yeah. I don't believe her. <laughs> I was. I was worried about my family with Monta. Well, first I was worried about my family with the LNG tanks across the mm -hmm. river because they were so close. We were in the one-minute zone. And I didn't care if they wiped me out, but I really didn't want them wiping my kids out that quickly. So, and from there, Sylvia decided that it was time to make these people put up or shut up when they had agreed to either repower or shut down. And it seemed like, well, all right, yeah, I guess. And that's where we are. They shut down. Why I'm still in this, I don't know. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Yes, <laughs> Maria. Hi, I'm Maria Connolly, and um, I got involved because of Eversource and Spectra wanting to propose all the LNG tanks in a cushioned mass. Uh, my son and daughter live right down the street from this proposal, this huge proposal they're making a cushioned. There's three schools nearby within one point. One school, uh, one elementary school is one mile. The other elementary school and middle school is 1.3 miles from this facility if it goes through. So there's uh, at least 1,700 students, children, that would be near the site. And um, I, uh, when I heard about it, it just, <laughs> I was, I'm uh, being a parent, you know, I don't want my son and daughter living near these tanks, 6.8 billion cu cubic feet, 13 more than what's there right now. And the only reason the two existing tanks are there is because back in 1971, the people in the Kushner ruled against this, were told that there was going to be a meeting in Boston, the DPU meeting would be at 9 o'clock, and they were going to listen to people with their grievances about these two original tanks that are there. 
those two tanks that are there hold 0 0.5 billion cubic feet. So it's nothing compared with the two humongous ones they want to add on. Uh, but the thing is, it went through because people got up to Boston and were told, guess what, the meeting was held at 5.30 a.m. Oh, so the residents couldn't oh, vote on it. The deal really? was all set, it was all done. That's how Kama Kushner it has those two existing LNG tanks. That's so messed up. Oh. It was really underhanded, really, That's by amazing. them staff. Yes, the people who, who they now have a source. Oh, yeah, that's, that's why those things are there. And uh, <laughs> it's like to propose all this. This is all about them wanting to export fracked gas. I mean, mm -hmm. come on, mm -hmm. we know. Yeah. And it's just, uh, it just, yeah. So I took to knocking on doors. <laughs> and then I called, the first person that I called was, uh, I called the Fall River City Hall because I wanted to know information about the group that had fought Hess. Okay. And <laughs> they referred me to a gentleman who was a consular and he referred me to you. So Steve, Steve, Mike Mayoza. Oh, Mike Mayoza. Yes. So Joe's, Joe Cavallo was the first person that I spoke to and I got, um, excuse me, advice from. And then the second person was Karen Valandry from Hands Across the River, mm. and she introduced me to Claire. And that's how I know yeah. <laughs> all of you. So here we are. Here we are. Great, thank you. Um, so my next question, and maybe we can start at this end and go that way and vice versa, um, is about what have been some, what's been a proud, one of your proudest moments? Um, and what has been one of your biggest challenges in this work? Oh my God, the biggest challenge is getting people educated about what's going yeah. on That's around them. Oh, people are too busy to care about what's happening, what's going on around them. Even though we have TV, we have the internet, people are still not aware. Or maybe they shut themselves off. They don't want to hear about the problems that are going on. And uh, that's a big challenge. What's been one of your proudest moments? Uh, well, the, the decision last week mm -hmm. by the, uh, the SJC court not to at least have us pay for all this. It's like, I mean, whoa. I, I still can't believe it. It's like, oh, really? Yeah. But I still yeah. feel that we have a long way to go. Yeah. We have a long way to go because, let's face it, money and power is what runs this world. It's sad, but that's the way it is. But we can each do our little bit and try to fight them. At least make it hard for them. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Maria. Pauline, any biggest challenge? Well, there's also the people, but in our case, town hall. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to convince the people who are in charge that giving up $15 million a year in tax money versus being able to breathe and live, we think it's a no-brainer. They feel otherwise. And they feel that if they want to get elected, they have to be careful with tax money. Um, our biggest reward, I told you, my children breathing clean air. Mm. Yeah. That's what it's all about, and that's all I cared about. Thank you. Joe? Oh, oh. Well, challenge. Um, Probably the biggest challenge is sometimes uh, some of the people that are with you create some of the biggest obstacles. Uh, we had a woman who just passed away not that long ago, Grandma. Mrs. Weiner. Yeah, Lee Weiner. Who lived up to her name. What was her name? Weiner. <laughs> her name was Weiner. Weiner. I thought you were being sarcastic. Oh. <laughs> and, um, 
wow. when we'd have meetings, she would always come to the meetings and say repeatedly sometimes, what are we fighting this for? Uh, it's a done deal. Oh. It's a done deal. How are we going to fight a multinational you are a billion dollar uh, company like Hess? Uh, so that was that that was a challenge. Uh, so sometimes you have to be concerned that that everybody in the group is uh, is reading from the same uh, playbook. Um, another challenge too is that communities like Fall River and Somerset, Fall River was the leading textile producer in the world in the 1900s, which meant that there were 200 cotton mills operating. And uh, General Motors wanted to come to Fall River, <laughs> Shoe Industries wanted to come to Fall River, and the mill owners kept them out <laughs> because they didn't want to have to pay yeah, higher don't. wages and things like that. Wait. So, so Somerset finds itself in the same position, in a way, with their reliance on these two coal plants, mm -hmm. yeah. rather than diversifying their economic base, uh, you know, which the Synapse report, which I have in my hand, <laughs> mm -hmm. has some plans. I mentioned this on the radio today, by the way, oh. when I was on, cool. uh, talking about alternative alternatives that would produce tax money and give people jobs, green jobs, uh, and so forth. So, you know, it's there. Of course, the biggest accomplishment is from 2003 to 2011, fighting the LNG proposal for Fall River in the North End in a, in a densely populated area. It took us eight years for them to pull their permits. And of course, a lot of it is based on the fact of <coughs> evil fracking Right. Uh, made it uh, not economically viable for them to want to import. Uh, so now, of course, our concern is exporting mm. LNG. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Things have changed. Yes. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh gosh, uh, the proudest, uh, uh, the best has been the continuum of this campaign. I, I couldn't, you know, it's hard to pick out a. You know, just the, the the level of organizing and the people and the long-term commitment, uh, toxic action. Uh, you know, uh, 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 the support, um, the report. Uh, you know, uh, you know all those people who showed up to uh, a protest breaking point uh, two years ago. That was uh, wonderful. You know, things like that. You know, keep me going. Yeah. Um, uh, you know. Uh, I'll tell you one that I th that I was I was discussing with Jack today, and it's a little bit of an ego thing because uh, I saw this done to Ralph Nader uh, 15 years ago in Washington D.C. <clears throat> we had a thing in South Park, in Kennedy Park, and Fall River a few years ago, and when I got up to talk, there was a helicopter overhead, and I think it was the helicopter that that checks the power lines. And, mm. you know, we each got up and said something. And when I got up to say something, the helicopter dropped down so you couldn't hear me. And, I mean, it was disconcerting. But then I went back and stood in line, and, and uh, my buddy Tom Perkins said to me, they're afraid of you. <laughs> I said, all right. <laughs> so, anyway, um, that actually happened. Uh, and, uh, and I saw that done to Ralph Nader in Washington, D.C. <clears throat> get up in a park, and it's just like black mm. helicopter. Maybe oh I was hallucinating, God. I don't know. But anyway, um, <laughs> and the, the challenge would be what I said before, the disappointment and the cynicism or, or, or backwardness of our elected people. Uh, the people at the legislature, I mean, Lori Ehrlich was on the radio this afternoon with the, you know, the animal preservation yeah. bill, and she's, I hear her on NPR all the time talking yeah. about the gas leaks, and. There are some wonderful people at the legislature, but our senator, it, uh, uh, you know, is very Republican leaning. Um, uh, you know, he's been there; he was there too long as a rep, and uh, and uh, the state rep from Somerset. Uh, you know, you just get some some. You know, it's like they're, they're thinking. 
they're not thinking in this in this century, you know. And that's it. you know, educating educating the public is difficult. And bringing along the elected people is seems impossible. But uh, but we've had some wonderful victories. We really have. You know, when we started this.